Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, a lot happens in football that fans aren't really privy to. Um, with the New England Patriots in particular, Spygate. I can tell you from having looked at interviews that several prominent members of the St. Louis Rams from back in the day, the greatest show on turf, firmly believe that the New England Patriots had access to Ram practices right outside of the rules prior to the Super Bowl that the Rams lost in which they were favored by 14 points right Marshall Falk Kurt Warner firmly believe after having called some plays that had never been called all season long and then having watched the New England Patriots make adjustments as the play was being called that the New England Patriots had an illegal advantage that they had been tipped off. Then, of course, we get spy game. Now, you, the fan, have never had the opportunity to see what was on those spy gate films. Never. Right? The guy who blew the whistle on spy gate, he curiously has disappeared off the face of the planet. Right? He's not even available for interviews with these sports networks whenever there's a talk of impropriety in professional sports. Well, now we have really a scandal that's being underreported. The idea that 11 of 12 footballs used in a game and touched by many players, right? You can imagine whenever New England had the ball, future Hall of Fame quarterback Tom Brady felt those footballs repeatedly, right? The running backs on the New England Patriots. I'm sure carried those balls repeatedly. Understand, the deflation of the balls was so obvious that a defensive player on the Colts who got an interception, and that's the only way they would have access to the balls that the Patriots were using, right? Notice that the ball was a little bit deflated. And, of course, that's what started this scandal. So, here's my prediction, right? Because the NFL understands that it can't jeopardize its cash cow, the Super Bowl, right? They can't. Too much money is involved. They can't roll back the clock and tell you that a team that lost 45-7, to the Indianapolis Colts, has been awarded the AFC crown, especially since I'm guessing many of the Colts have cleared out their locker and are well into their offseason. Right, since Chuck Pagano and his crew, I'm sure haven't been coaching up the team since their last loss. Right, they're in postseason mode, uh, excuse me, they're in after the season mode. They're not in pre preparation for a Super Bowl mode. So here's my prediction on what's going to happen. Perhaps it's too cynical. We're going to get inundated with stories that this idea of doctoring footballs is nothing new. You're going to hear from several old-timers that, hey, we used to put footballs in ovens. We used to use hair dryers on footballs. We used to put some dirt on footballs to make sure that they were to our liking. This morning, there's a story on Brad Johnson in a Super Bowl paying $7,500 to make sure the balls were right. But just to understand, the NFL actually allows you to do certain things to footballs, to have the grip you like. But the rules clearly state that the air can't be removed from the footballs, that the football has to be within a certain range in terms of the air inside of it to be acceptable. So just to understand, there's going to be a huge distinction between what you hear and what the rules are, right? If the Patriots systematically 
deflated balls within the last two and a half hours before their game with the Colts, then they broke the rules to get an illegal advantage. Right? That's the reality. Forget all this other nonsense about teams, you know, heating balls and all that other stuff. Some of the ball doctoring is legal. The question is whether you, the fan, are going to tolerate illegal ball doctoring in conference championship games where a berth in the Super Bowl is at stake. Let's be clear on this too. This is going to hurt legacies. Right? You can't be considered the best coach in NFL history if you're cutting corners in a way that the other coaches that you're being compared with did not. Right? Just like if you use steroids, sports leagues are going to frown on your accomplishments. They're going to devalue your numbers. Right? If you're doctoring footballs in an illegal manner in championship playoff games, I believe your accomplishments are also going to be devalued. Let me tell you, too, what I expect to happen. It's going to be plausible deniability. Right? The right hand's not going to know what the left hand's doing. Nobody in the Patriot organization is going to have any idea, I'm sure, how these balls got deflated. Right? Certainly nobody with power. There'll be a fall guy, all right, some lowly equipment manager or someone who, you know, isn't in a position to be considered for the Hall of Fame. Right? I'm guessing on an issue as big as this. Right, the condition of the balls used by your team in a championship playoff game. I'm guessing, curiously, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, the quarterback's coach, the quarterback, no one is going to have any idea who asked to have the balls deflated. Right, and make no mistake, too, we know that they would have delayed the game if on the first drive, Tom Brady was given a ball, and he said, whoa, wait a moment. This ball's deflated. This is a disadvantage. You and I know they would have stopped the game because, of course, the condition of the ball is a major factor. Right? It can impact the outcome of a game. If your quarterback is using messed up balls, and the other team has pristine balls that they favor, then you know that that's a big disadvantage for your team, right? Just imagine the line movement. If you were to hear, oh, in this Super Bowl, right, Seattle's going to be using jacked up balls that they don't like, and the Patriots will be allowed to use the balls they like, right? That would swing the line, I'm guessing, at least three points, right? There'd be concern over whether or not Russell Wilson would be comfortable enough, would be familiar enough with the balls he's using to be as effective as he normally is. Right? Now, if you believe they'd stop the game, if Tom Brady felt a ball and said, whoa, this is deflated, then they found out that 11 of the 12 balls were deflated. Right? If the Colts were suspected of putting the Patriot balls in the condition they were in. Would you be outraged? If the answer is yes, then you need to be outraged right now. Because if the Patriots were able to doctor the balls in an illegal manner, right? In other words, not scuff them up or put dirt on them in a manner permitted by the laws, but actually, by taking air out of the ball in a manner not permitted, then you should be outraged. Just like you should be outraged at the idea 
that the greatest show on turf may have been denied a Super Bowl victory, right, because of illegal spying, the events that led to the Spygate accusations, right? I think this deserves really close scrutiny. The NFL has already announced that if, in fact, the Patriots violated the rules, they're going to lose draft picks, right? This is almost like rewarding the guy who's robbing his second bank. Didn't Belichick already get caught and reprimanded for Spygate? Now all you're going to do is take away draft picks, not wins? I'll tell you what. I believe there are a lot of teams in this league. A lot. Who have given a chance to get in the Super Bowl by violating rules that will result in only the loss of draft picks. Right? A lot of teams would take the penalty to get in the Super Bowl. Right? Hell. The league allows free agent signings. I'm a Giants fan. If the Giants gave up all of their draft picks to get in the Super Bowl, I'd understand that risk-reward. I'm not saying I endorse it, but I'd understand the thinking behind it. Right? If you're going to allow the New England Patriots to simply lose some draft picks, right, simply lose some draft picks, you know, uh, for this rule violation that helped them get into the Super Bowl, then I don't believe you're serious about enforcing your rules, right? At this point, maybe we need to consider putting an asterisk by New England's name if they win the Super Bowl and then explaining next to the asterisk that 11 of 12 balls were deflated, right? Have the world understand that this team may have cut corners, right, to get to the Super Bowl, right? Let's end this farce of Tom Brady being able to show up in a rehearsed fashion on a radio show knowing he's going to be asked about deflated balls, right? Because you're the quarterback of the New England Patriots. This is a big story, right? Anyone can show up, and then you're asked about it, and then laugh and go, ha, 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 I've heard it all now, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, right, like this guy didn't know that the balls he was handling were deflated. Like this guy didn't tell somebody that he prefers deflated balls, because let's face it, for New England to have an advantage, right, somebody in the building had to say, hey, deflated balls gives us that advantage. So let's keep an eye on this story. Let's keep an eye on the plausible deniability. I'm guessing everyone who's employed by the Patriots is going to say, what? The balls were deflated? You're kidding, right? How could that happen? I'm guessing something as basic as a simple chain of custody in terms of who had the balls for the two and a half hours before the game is suddenly going to come across as a complicated quest to find the truth that borders on trying to get the facts behind the Watergate scandal. Right? You know, somehow it's going to suddenly be hard to figure out who had the balls at what time. Keep in mind, the league actually had to inspect the balls just a couple hours before the game. Right? So this really is an outrage, I believe, that just casts further suspicion on the New England Patriot recent success. We can't call it a dynasty when your team hasn't won the Super Bowl for a decade. Let's just call it recent sustained success, right, um, coming literally one week after Shane Vereen was posing as an offensive lineman and actually looking at the quarterback and having his hands up like he wanted to catch passes, right, one week after what John Harbaugh called deception, right, to hear about deflated balls, this is staggering. Keep in mind, the Patriots were the one seed in the AFC. You're telling me that they couldn't play a single playoff game this year without some scandal? By the way, for those keeping track, understand that the Ravens were leading that game when suddenly the Patriots started doing things that had never been done before, 
right? Understand, when you look at the replay, Shane Vereen clearly is not in the role of an offensive lineman, right? He's standing as a lineman. He's not blocking anybody, folks, right? Now we have Tom Brady laughing at the thought of deflated balls, only to have us learn that 11 of the 12 were deflated. 11 of the 12. I guess they had that 12th ball. They left it properly inflated for plausible deniability reasons. Right? So don't buy the hype of this being just the typical chicanery that happens in the National Football League. Right? Don't confuse stories of Brad Johnson wanting the ball scuffed up a certain way right, in a manner permitted by the rules, with this effort to actually deflate balls, right, to give the ball a completely different feel in a manner not permitted by the rules, right, simply put, this is an outrage, right, I know there are former quarterbacks on television who want to further the New England mythology, Right, talking about how this is much ado about nothing. Right? They're selling you horse manure. 11 of 12 balls were illegally inflated. Right? They're missing ear. Right? They violated the rules. Right? In an AFC championship game. I'm all for teams being aggressive, but not like this. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.